Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Have you ever heard the story of the carpenter bee and the Orpheum flower? In South Africa, the Orpheum frutescence flower has established a special relationship with a single species of bee, the female carpenter bee. The flower is very possessive of its pollen, and it prefers just this one type of bee, and it only gives this bee access. So when the bee approaches, the wings of the bee start to oscillate, and it oscillates at a specific frequency. And that frequency, it's the middle C note. When the bee approaches the flower, it's beating its wings at a completely different frequency, but when it approaches, it changes to the middle C, and instantly, the flower opens up its stamens and it releases this shower of pollen. And you know what happens next, right? The bee goes to the next Orpheum flower and it gets its fix of pollen, but it helps to pollinate the Orpheum flowers. In short, there's very little waste. When you have a marketing list that seemingly runs into six figures, waste almost seems to be part of the equation. Everything seems to boil down to conversion rates rather than real people. And yet, the conversion rates are extremely shoddy, often amounting to less than one thousandth of one percent. When we look around us, it's easy to get seduced by huge mailing lists. We look at all these high revenue numbers. We look at people just like us, and they seem to have this constant spotlight. And we cannot see beyond the smokescreen. We cannot accept our failure. We can't resolve the issue that other people seem to be doing so well and we're not doing as well. And we think maybe there is something abnormal in the way we're handling things. And for many of us, that big list, if we got that big list, that would solve most of our problems. Or at least that's what we think. The reality is quite different. Lists, large lists, are resorting to any method to get more sales. Advertising, publicity, speaking engagements, and now marketing right through Facebook Messenger. The overall open rate keeps on falling, but the big names have to keep paying their inflated bills. In short, there's a ton of waste with big lists. And this can be greatly avoided if we understand the power of the small, even atom-sized list. Much like the exclusive relationship that the carpenter bee has with the Orpheum flower, we too can make small lists work. And we can make them work to dramatic effect with conversion rates far exceeding those of the fancy marketers. The question is, how do you go about working with tiny lists? And more importantly, have we been looking at this whole list exercise in the wrong manner? Let's take a completely different view at what we really should be doing instead of ogling those big lists. We'll focus on just three things that we can do with our tiny list. And we'll probably split this up into three episodes because there's so much to cover. But overall, this is what we'll cover. Number one, the first purchase. Why you don't need thousands or even hundreds of clients on your list. Two, how to willingly get clients to buy a second third, fourth, even 10 times in quick succession. And three, monitoring the connectedness of your community. And this is extremely critical for you succeeding, especially with small lists. But let's start out with the first thing, which is the first purchase. Why you don't need thousands or even hundreds of clients on your list. I was surprised when 20 people showed up for the first event I ever hosted in Auckland, New Zealand. 
There was a good reason for my surprise. I was a new immigrant to these islands of New Zealand. I knew just a few people. In my whole social life and my business life, it was constrained to one networking group that I belonged to. We'd meet every Fridays at 7 a.m. and I would enjoy that trip. But every week I had to stand up and give a 60 second speech about what I was doing. And I talked about an event that I was hosting with the topic, why clients buy and why they don't. About 15 to 17 members from that group decided that they would show up and they convinced others to come as well. The speech didn't go so well. I forgot what I had to say. Then I took a 10 minute break to reset my composure. However, at the end of the speech, I did have a tiny little offer. I spoke of eight similar topics that I would be speaking about in the months to come. And then, in my bravest voice, suggested that the members of the group sign up. We'd have a session once a month. It would cost $75. I said it aloud. I put it up on the screen. And I waited for their response. Which is when I got my second surprise. Ten people signed up. Imagine that, 10 people decided to show up month after month, even though I had such a disastrous start with my presentation. But 10 people sounds like nothing if you're steeped into this mindless talk of six-figure incomes. Yet, Renuka and I were both over the moon because now we would be earning $750 a month that we didn't have the month before. Think about it for a second. That's the equivalent of someone paying you $750 an hour to consult with them. Of course, don't be fooled by the one-hour concept. We still had to prepare the content. We had to find the venue. We had to go to the venue. We had to deliver stuff. It's not just one hour. But 10 people showed up paying $75 a month. That's $750. And they did so for many months to come. But notice, you notice what happens when you get a group to attend something. You get them to make their first purchase. So what is the first thing that clients buy from you? And do you have anything that follows right after that? Now, maybe you don't have everything ready. We certainly didn't, but we did have a list of topics. That's all we had, the list. And this is the primary concept that sort of escapes a lot of entrepreneurs. The list that you're going to have in future is important, but it's not as important as you think. You may have 20 million followers on Instagram. You may have 7 gazillion views on YouTube. But why would that make a difference? How does it make a difference other than to bolster your vanity? Instead, what really matters is the first sale and then the follow-up sequence. Not everyone is selling information, of course. Some of us sell consulting. Others may sell coffee or coffee cups. What matters is the first cup of coffee, the first consulting session, and then how you invite that client to the second session. 10 people showing up daily for a cup of 10 coffees quickly adds up to $450. 10 people showing up for 300 coffees a year amounts to a staggering $13,500. Not surprisingly, if you're selling information, you can do what we did. You can find a local group, you can get to know them over a few weeks or months, and then invite them to a single event. Once you've got them at that event, you invite them to subsequent events. But if you look at it from an online point of view, you never even have to budge from your computer. Webinar software is about $14 per month. And just 10 clients at $75 brings you about $7,500 per year. And this is $7,500 that you didn't already have. The comedian John Oliver was on the media recently. And he had published a book, and that book sold 180,000 copies in just two days. So... Yeah. So, so you released it at the same time, the same time as yeah. his children's book. Yes. And this children's book um, is right now, as we sit here and speak, yours is number one on Amazon. It is? Yes. That's nice for John, isn't it? 
But there is another John, John August, and he's an excellent screenwriter. He wrote movies such as Big Fish, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And on his podcast, the other John, John August, talks about how booksellers sell five books at a time. On his podcast, John August seems to be going through the same jitters that we all feel. His book, The Adventures of Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire, it took a mind-numbing two years from start to publish date. And five copies at a time? That almost seems inordinately disgusting. Yet, if you go away from the bright lights of seemingly instant success, you can carve your own spot. Ten clients here, ten clients there, and you've started to get your business off the ground. You're making tiny movements, not seismic jolts. In our experience, we found that clients also upgrade. They also move up the chain in a way. And they started out at $75, but then many of those same clients then attended a workshop which is priced at $1,500. And then, as you can probably guess, they followed up with smaller workshops which were priced at $650. And that's just what was happening offline. It was giving us a chance to get our act together. Remember, we didn't have any information. We didn't have any products ready. We were just doling out topics, just topics. And then they'd sign up and we'd go on to create the information. The very same scenario played out when clients bought the Brain Audit, when they brought into the membership at 5000 BC. They recognized how we were doing things. They recognized how it helped their business. So when I offered a program in 2006, I called it the Protege program. And it was only limited to 15 people. At first, it was priced at $6,500, and then eventually it went to $10,000. Many of these clients came in free. Many of them bought into the Brain Audit. Many of them joined 5000 BC. And then they went on to spend all of this money, which generated first $65,000 a year, and then $150,000. And all of these figures seem very interesting, but we forget that at all times, back then and even now, we have been working with very small numbers of clients. And one of the things that might intimidate you is that you don't have all the information ready. You don't have everything ready. You're selling a product, you don't have everything ready. And that was the same for us when we started out the Protege program. We had no information ready. We were in crisis mode. My wife, Renuka, she had an accident and she couldn't work for three months. We had an employee that was so inept that we spent most of our time just fixing her mistakes. But that didn't stop us from taking on 10 people at a time. And this is all about information products. This is about training, about workshops. And if you're selling services, you're probably tuning out a bit at this point. However, stick around. Because I've been going to an acupuncturist recently. I got back from India, I lifted some heavy bags down the stairs, and the weakling that I am, I had an inflamed back and I had a stiff neck. Which is why I found myself at the acupuncturist. First step done. What did she do? She reduced the swelling that I had in my finger. And then there are many steps to go. So essentially what she has to do is go, okay, you've done this one thing, but we have to do many sessions. Here's how many sessions you have to do. And that sets up the whole framework for going back. And not only did I go back, but I went back with Renuka. And then a few weeks later, my brother-in-law, he also got into that list. And my hairdresser is not far away and would like to go to that acupuncturist too. Now, it sounds pretty puny, doesn't it? Five people, 10 people, 15 people, not 500,000 people or 180,000 like on John Oliver's book sales. And yet... A business can be built step by step, brick by brick, or perhaps 10 bricks at a time. Our woozy little start enabled us to take three months off every year. And we've done this since 2004. We take vacations that don't involve any work or email. And this pathetic little growth sequence has enabled us to avoid all of those fancy speaking engagements worldwide. We've done no advertising ever. We've barely done a dollop of publicity. And we're doing quite well. But what does this mean for you?
It means that you have to first get yourself off those lists that drive you crazy. All those emails that you get that talk about how you should double, treble, do all that stuff, you need to unsubscribe. There are exceptions to every rule, but by and large, when you're looking at large lists, you're looking at a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that no one bothers to tell you about. Also bear in mind that a large list doesn't necessarily lead to large conversion. If you don't get swayed by the large numbers, you can build up your business and subsequently your vacation time. And you can do it 10 people at a time. However, you have to have a sequence in place. We've already talked about one type of sequence where the client comes back for more. They come back for more coffee, more webinars, or possibly more needle pricking at the acupuncturist. Now that's the starting point. At Psychotactics, we then take that sequence to another level. This level takes a little more time, of course. It's not as quick as having 10 to 15 subsequent sales. However, you can create a sequence that's horizontal and slightly vertical too. So if you look at the last few pages of your copy of the Brain Audit, you'll see that sequence. But wait, you're not reading the Brain Audit right now, are you? So let me explain what that sequence contains and why it's so very important when you're moving clients to the next stage. And that brings us to the end of the first part. And in this first part, we covered how you can build your list 10 people at a time and then have something that they can come back for. And this sets us nicely for the second part, which is how to willingly get clients to buy a second time, a third time, fourth time, even 10 times in quick succession. What do cicadas have in common with prime numbers? You've probably heard a cicada if you've not seen one, and there are these insects that make a lot of noise. But when they show up to mate, they're also dinner for a lot of pets, rodents, marsupials, reptiles, birds, fish, other insects. Almost every creature will eat them. Therefore, the cicadas, when they show up to mate, will show up in large numbers. These large numbers mean that millions of cicadas show up at a specific given time. In a specific given year, their numbers are so large that their predators can't eat them all. But that's just because of a bit of maths, and yes, prime numbers. The cicadas need to minimize the chance of interbreeding with other cicadas. If they interbred, they would have offspring that didn't have a long life cycle. And the shorter life cycle would mean that the offspring couldn't stay underground for 12 or 16 years. So they'd have to come out more frequently to breed, and then they'd be out in smaller numbers, and of course the predators would get to them. In a fascinating series called The Code by Marcus du Sotoy, he talks about how in Georgia, USA, one breed of periodical cicadas show up every 13 years and the other breed every 17 years. Now, if they get these calculations wrong, it would be a disaster. But because they use prime numbers, the chances of interbreeding only occurs once in 221 years. Luckily for us, clients don't use prime numbers when considering the need to buy our products, when they need to buy our services. Instead, they show up at frequent intervals, often quickening the pace as they consume more of the content, more of the product, more of the service. No one starts out having 300 coffees a year, but eventually, one cup leads to another and then we wake up every morning thinking about that coffee. Amazon.com, YouTube, Netflix, they know this phenomenon. They know that it works, so they push similar content towards you. And this is what we covered in the first part today, didn't we? We looked at, okay, there's one topic, and then you're gonna come back for several other topics. It's very similar. You go to the acupuncturist, you come back for several sessions. But on Psychotactics, we also have another system, and that's a sort of sequence. And the real source of inspiration is dinner at a restaurant. So when you sit down to dinner, what happens? You first get your dessert, then you get your mains, and then you get your starters, right? 
No, of course not. That's not how it works. There is a sequence in place. And the sequence is logical. At least it seems logical to us. We begin with the drinks, we begin with the starters, then we move to the mains, then we possibly have salads, and finally it's dessert or a coffee or a tea. So that is the sequence. And when you look at the psychotactic sequence, you'll notice that same phenomenon playing out. You'll start off with the subscriber level, then you'll buy the brain audit, then you'll get to 5000 BC, then you'll be prompted to do courses like the article writing course. But there's also the climb down. You can hone your skills on a headline course or the first 50 words course. And this is more like dessert and coffee. And this sequence works really well with a tiny list. A client who wants to learn about photography rarely wants to start and then stop. So let's say a client signed up for a concept like taking pictures in low light. Now that client would be happy to go deeper into those studies. They would not just stay within that parameter of just taking some webinars or reading books. They would also do other stuff. Every year, dozens of courses are held in the South Island of New Zealand to capture the southern sky, which is amazing. And I use the example of New Zealand for a simple reason. It's probably as far away as most clients can travel. And yet, those very same clients start off following an Instagram account, they buy a book, they possibly join a course or a seminar. And the next thing you know, they're in the freezing cold down in the South Island, taking pictures of the Milky Way. We always assume that we need large numbers for such an enterprise to succeed. In reality, you don't, and you possibly never will. While most of conversion sits nervously at maybe 2%, the conversion rate of someone going through a sequence can be almost 100%. I know this sounds pretty mind-boggling to you, but there are clients that have bought almost everything that we have to sell. And this is because they go through the sequence. In the article writing course sequence, for instance, a client will read articles on the psychotactic site. Then they'll sign up for the article writing goodies. They'll buy into the outlining book. Then they'll get the home study of the article writing course. Or they'll sign up for the live course. Those very same clients then buy into the advanced storytelling course, the headlines course, the 50 words course. All of this is connected to just one topic, which is article writing. We're not even talking about copywriting. We're not even talking about getting your business set up or something else. And if you find that mind boggling, well, yes, it is. But it's also pretty natural. We do this every time we go out to dinner. We know we've had too much already, but we're still looking for that second drink at the end of the meal. And the satisfaction that we feel is much greater. And we want a result. And that's why clients buy from you. They want a result. While it's all very fine to talk about conversion and keywords and fancy technology, the most powerful tool of all is consumption. And the clients buy the product, they use it, they consume it, and that is consumption. In the photography example, they might just step into that Instagram account just to look at the pictures, then sign up for a webinar, and then they end up in New Zealand. They end up having the time of their lives. And as a result, they've now got some kind of happiness, some satisfaction, some skill. And when they finish that one sequence, it's not like they go away. They come back for a different meal. So a client that's done the article writing sequence doesn't write off into the horizon. Instead, she comes back to learn more about copywriting or how to draw or how to cook. Now, it's likely that you don't have the sequence in place. And remember that we didn't either. The ProDJ course had no content. We had a sales page and that was pretty much it. However, as the year progressed, I'd keep a few steps ahead of the clients. You've heard of how the brain audit moved from 20 pages to the current 180 pages. But that pretty much happened for many products and many services, many courses. The book on testimonials called The Secret Life of Testimonials, it was just 20 pages. Then a friend said he'd promote it to his list and so I sat down and I changed that book to its current 100 plus pages. The article writing course, that was just a bunch of recorded audio calls. There were no notes. Then in the following year, we added notes. Then in the years to come, we'd add little bits of information. And it stayed that way in version one for almost 10 years. 
In 2016, I wrote version 2.0. We may add audio, we may add additional video, but you're getting the point, aren't you? The sequence is never going to be in place. Even though we've been going at this since the year 2000, there are loads of sequences to put in place. But to get back to the very core of sequence, think of it as dinner. Dinner goes from one end to the other. And that's the core sequence that you need. Not some fancy funnel, not some zigzag stuff, Clients will follow a sequence just like they follow that karate sequence of white belt, yellow belt, red belt, black belt. And within that sequence, you can have other sequences. You can see all of this at the psychodactic site, by the way. There is a whole grid there, a whole map, so you can see it out there if you want. But the question is, is all of this possible with just a few people on your list? A tiny list has limitations, that's for sure. Not everyone is going to be able to fly to New Zealand for your stargazing party, even if they want to do so. You definitely want to grow your list. That's a good idea, but there's no need for that big list just today. Most descriptions of lists that you see online are like revenue statements. They only tell you what you want to know. And a revenue statement is not an accurate representation of the success of the company. You have to know the debts of the company and you have to know their net profit. And only then can you come to some clarity and only then can you know whether the company is doing well or not. At Psychotactics, less than even a tenth of the list opens their email. And this is true for most people across industries. You can head over to an Instagram account and there can be literally a million followers and they get 20 comments and 2,000 likes. Just because you have the list doesn't mean that you have engagement, doesn't mean that you have sales. A lot of what you read online is created just to puff up their own sense of security and bigness. And in doing so, they make you feel small and they make you feel worthless. They make you feel that somehow you too need that big, massive list. And as you can tell, what you need is strategy. The Maori, the original native tribe of New Zealand, have a saying. It's called, fish at your feet first. And modern New Zealand has another saying, we don't have the money, so we have to think. In many ways, taking this wisdom is what makes us smarter, more strategic business owners. A big list can be a crutch. You come to depend on getting one hundredth of one percent and then to boost your conversion rate, you have to hire staff, you have to buy software, you have to dig deeper into your budget for advertising. Plus, it's all hard work. I can't reveal names and I won't, but I'm well connected with many people in the industry. And while some of them have learned to work and relax, for most it's just work, work and more work. Working with current clients, fishing at your feet first, that is the smart move. Figuring out a sequence, that's a really smart move. Then working out the sequence to get clients coming back is what we really need. And it proves one more thing as well. If you're able to get clients to come back once, twice, 300 times, it means that you're doing something right. Clients are people like you, they are people like me. We may get fooled up to a point and then we decide to go with people who get us genuine results, who bring skill, not just more information. We decide that we've had enough of the charlatans with their puffery and their big lists. We want a better life. We don't want to worry about money. If that's what we can achieve, we may still aspire for the big list, we may still aspire for the crazy lifestyle, but we learn to make peace. And we learn to make peace with having fun in our day-to-day -day lives and with working with our clients. And now that we've seen how to get a small list going, let's look closely at the third factor, which is monitoring the connectedness of your community. Does that matter at all? And that brings us to the end of this podcast. We're now 26 minutes into the podcast. Let's wrap it up. What did we cover so far? The first thing that we looked at today was how to work with a few clients. So the first purchase matters. You don't need thousands or even hundreds of people on your list. You can literally get 20 people in the room. Out of that, 10 people sign up. Out of those 10 people... 
you sell them one thing and then they come back for recurring stuff. This might be coffee, it might be a workshop, it might be a series of webinars, it might be anything. What you're really focused on is how do I get X number of people in the room? And one of our clients has just got four people, just four kids to her workshop. But those four kids can then be signed up for several workshops and over time, more kids will join. And that's how you start up. You start up really small. So that first purchase is more critical than having this big list that everybody talks about. Get to the first purchase, get the client to buy something. And that buying might be the first free session, but after that, the subsequent sessions are paid sessions. The second thing that we covered was how to get clients to buy a second, third, fourth, even 10 times in succession. So we looked at getting them to buy one thing and then several things, but they will also jump up in scale. So a client who buys into a series of, say, webinars will then come to a workshop, which is up in scale. They might then come to some kind of inner circle or you have some kind of event. Now, obviously, I'm going all over the place and this is more related to psychotactics, but it applies to businesses all kinds of businesses, whether you have a service business, whether you have a consulting practice, anything, it the same concepts apply, you just have to use them in the right way. And really that's what we covered in this thing, the first purchase and then how to get clients to willingly scale up. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in psychotactics land. We talked about sequences in the podcast, and you've probably read the Brain Audit. If you haven't read the Brain Audit, then please do so, because it shows you how customers think and why they hesitate. You've made this great presentation, you've put up this great sales page, but things aren't clicking through. Why is that the case? It's because of the hesitation factor. And if you've already read the Brain Audit, then read it again. And the reason for that is you're possibly missing out some little bits. Now, You can also speed up that process. You can be part of 5000 BC where you can find the website critique forum. And in that forum, you can get your website or especially not website, but at least your sales page critiqued. And you can find out what are the pieces that are missing that you're not seeing. There are so many elements on a sales page or any page for that matter that you might not be seeing. And that's where 5000 BC can help you. But other than that, 5000 BC is this great place where introverts meet and where we have these long, meaningful discussions and people get to ask their questions and and we go on and on and on. And it's interesting because it helps you systematically, organically grow your business by getting your questions answered and then implementing little bits instead of these huge chunks. So join us in 5000 BC, and I'll say bye for now because we've just touched the 30-minute mark. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye.